Hi, from the XML introduction presentation, you have learned how powerful XML can be because of its data independency. That is, it has both the data as well as the metadata which talks about the data. Today, we will learn what an XML parser is and the three different types of XML parsing standards that are available, namely DOM, SACS and STACS. We will also learn a few advantages and disadvantages of these three types of XML parsing standards. For the purpose of this demo, let's assume that we are working on an e-commerce application that integrates with Amazon and places orders on Amazon using XML. Here is how our order XML for this purpose will look like. Order is the root element and it has two item elements, two item child elements. And Amazon will use a XML parser to read this XML file. A parser, an XML parser is a program that allows our applications to read or build and write XML documents. There are three different types of XML parsing standards that are available. The first one is the DOM parser or the DOM parsing standard. DOM stands for document object model. So if Amazon uses a DOM parser to parse this XML, a DOM parser will load the entire order.xml into memory and then using the standard DOM interfaces will be accessing the different elements within this XML document hierarchically. That is, once this document is loaded using a DOM parser, the DOM APIs will allow us to access the order element first and then we can invoke the methods on the DOM API and access its child elements. DOM is at its advantages to use DOM when you have to access widely spread XML elements within an XML document. So if you want to access item 1 and item 2 at the same time, you should be using a DOM parser. You can both read and write documents using a DOM parser. You can also write to or access multiple XML documents at the same time using a DOM parser. An obvious disadvantage is DOM loads the entire XML document into memory, so it has a huge memory footprint. That brings us to the SACS parser, which comes to the rescue. SACS stands for Simple API for XML Parsing, and a SACS parser, unlike the DOM parser, doesn't load the entire XML document into memory. Instead, it allows us to register a handler. A handler is nothing but a class we write, and we override the different methods. And when we register this handler with a SACS parser, and when the SACS parser passes our order XML, it keeps firing events or it keeps invoking the methods on our handler class within which we'll take appropriate action. So as soon as a SACS parser hits the order element, it invokes the it invokes a method on our handler, giving us the element name and the appropriate details. Similarly, when it hits item 1, it tells us that it has uh, reached item 1. Similarly, when it reaches item 2, it tells us, it tells our handler that it has reached item 2 and these are the contents of item 2 and we can then process them. In our case, we store, we pass the data and then save it to the database. Unlike the DOM parser, the SACS parser reads the document and then forgets about it. So as soon as it reaches item 2, the item it forgets about item 1. So it doesn't store the entire XML document. It doesn't load the entire XML document into memory. It's always advantageous to use SACS when you have memory constraints. Most of our applications do. And so SACS, SACS is a preferred parser to use in our applications. Along with its advantages, SACS also has a couple of disadvantages. SACS is a read-only parser. So you cannot write or create XML documents using a SACS parser and also SACS is a push parser that is your application code doesn't have a handle on the XML document or you cannot explicitly ask for what you want from the XML the SACS parser keeps firing events and within your handler you will have to take whatever the SACS parser gives you that is exactly where the SACS parser comes for the rescue a stack stands for streaming API for XML parsing and a stacks parser 
or the Stacks API allows our application to explicitly ask for what we need from the XML document and it doesn't load the entire XML document into memory. So it's like a hybrid of Stacks and uh, DOM and it's a very famous XML API out there in the market right now. Stacks allows you to read and write XML documents so it's bi-directional unlike a Stacks parser and also it allows you to read and write multiple documents at the same time. Most of the languages and platforms out there support all these three types of XML parsing standards and uh, JAXP is the Java API for XML parsing. It defines the interfaces that we should familiarize ourselves with it as, a, as Java developers. So it depends all the interfaces that we need to do DOM parsing, stacks parsing and also stacks pull parsing. And when I do the hands-on session, I will learn about the three different types of parsers. You will see the three different types of parsers in action and we will learn the various interfaces and classes within the JAXP API and its implementations. JDK comes up with a default implementation, default, default parser implementation for JAXP, which allows you to do all these three here. And also there are several famous open source XML Java parser implementations for the JAXP standard like Apache Xerxes, Salon, etc. To summarize, today you have learned the three different types of XML parsing standards, namely DOM, SAX and STAX. DOM stands for Document Object Model and the DOM parser loads the entire XML document into memory so it has a huge memory footprint. SACS on the other hand which stands for Simple API for XML parsing doesn't load the entire XML document into memory it's an event based parser we write a handler, we register it with the SACS parser and when the SACS parser reads the XML document it keeps firing events as soon as it hits an XML element and we then take an appropriate action within our application code. Since stack, SAX is a push parser, our application doesn't have a handle on the XML document and that's where the stack parser comes to the rescue and it's a pull parser. It allows our application to explicitly ask for what we need from the XML document and the JAXP standard which stands for Java API for XML parsing defines the various interfaces that allows us to pass an XML document using any of these three styles. The JDK comes up with a default implementation for the JAXP standard that we can use. And also there are several famous open source implementations of the JAXP standard like Apache Xerxes and Zalar. When I do the hands-on presentation, you will see all these in action. Until then, keep sharing and learning. Thanks for watching.